All right, guys, I am super excited. Today is the first day to harvest my cucuzza squash. Those are Sicilian serpentine squash or serpent squash. And uh, we are going to be making a delicious Sicilian dish uh, called pasta with cucuzza. So I am in my cucuzza trellis here and I built this so these squash could grow and hang down. Now I got one right here and you can see that it's nice and straight and that's because it's hanging but even though it's low to the ground and it's actually touching the ground, uh, this one's ready to harvest. Uh, the idea here is to have them grow and they'll, they'll hang down off the side of the trellis or off the top here and they hang down and you just harvest them pick them that way. Now I got one here on the ground that's all curly it's ready to pick but because it's on the ground um, it needs to be uh, it, it'll grow crooked like that uh, so that's why we we hang them. Alright guys so let's let's harvest. Beautiful. One more Look at that. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clean these up. And uh, we're going to make a nice uh, Sicilian dish called pasta with cucuzza. And uh, the basic ingredients is tomatoes, onions, garlic, little basil, um, and your cucuzzas, of course. And we're going to cook it down to like a stew. And uh, pour that out with the pasta and enjoy. So let's get let's do that right now. Alright so we have all our ingredients here. We have our cucuzza and one thing I want to mention about these is that when you pick them, pick them between a foot to two feet long uh, because if they start getting too long they start getting woody and hard the uh, the shell and the inside they start getting very seedy. So what you do to check if they're good is you get your fingernail and you just push it right into the flesh here or the outside here. And if it leaves a little indentation, then they're good. That means they're very tender. Uh, but if it doesn't, that means they get hard and woody. Okay, we have our gogutsas. Oh, and also if you don't have gogutsa, you could use good old summer squash. Okay, they work just as good. Um, and you don't have to take the skins off of these. Just clean them up real good and chop them up. Okay, so we have our kugutsas. We have nice ripe tomatoes. We have Swiss chard that we got from our garden. Also, if you're growing kugutsa, you can use the leaves of the kugutsa, the medium to small, younger leaves uh, in place of the Swiss chard. But Swiss chard is just as good. Um, we're having, we have some onions and lots of garlic, all right? So those are our main ingredients and also basil. Where did I put the basil? Right here, okay? We got fresh basil we picked from our garden also. And as far as quantity, it's there's nothing set in stone here, okay? Um, just use a, a, a decent amount of your squash, a decent amount of, um, we might not use all of these. Tomatoes. I'm just showing you what we're going to use, but probably a, a, at least half of these here. Um, Swiss chard, we got more. Uh, like I said, there's nothing set in stone here. Just use a, a decent amount of almost equal amount of each would, would be good enough. Uh, except for, of course, your garlic and your uh, uh, basil. Um, all right, so let's get this. Uh, uh, we're going to get this kugutsa cut up and let me show you how to peel these too because you have to take the skin off. Almost honestly though, these are pretty tender but it's probably best to take the skin off. Now if these were probably a foot long, I probably wouldn't even bother taking the skin off because it'd be very tender. Um, but let's take the skin off of these with a potato peeler and chop it up and, and get everything else chopped up here and uh, let's get things cooking. All right, guys, so to peel your kugutsa, get yourself a potato peeler like this 
what you're going to want to do is just take the skin off like that. Just a very thin, very thin layer like that. Oops. Okay. You know, honestly, I don't even think I need to do this because this is so tender, I can see it. But just in case. And this is all going to our chickens. All right guys, now my wife is cutting up the tomatoes and the onions. I peeled the uh, kugutsa squash. Like most of your squash, just take the ends off. Okay. And that's gonna be chicken food. These are so tender. I can't wait. Okay, get all the ends off. All right, now, as far as cutting it, you're gonna wanna cut them in chunks. So since these are very thin, if these were bigger and fatter, I would say, you know, cut them in chunks like that and then split them in half. But what you want is chunks, okay? There's no set, nothing set in stone here, but uh, just good sized chunks like that. And they will all break down. And if you feel that's too big, just cut them in half. All right. All right, on the Swiss chard, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the stems off, we're gonna cook those with everything else, and then say the last, I don't know, less than 10 minutes of the cook time, we're gonna throw in the leaves, because the leaves take less time to cook. All right guys, we have all our vegetables cut up into good sized chunks. Um, now, first thing we're gonna put in here is olive oil. Make sure you use extra virgin, first cold pressed, organic olive oil, um, because that is real olive oil, okay? We're gonna put a decent amount in here. Just how much? I don't know, just say till it covers the bottom of your pan. That should do it. Alrighty. Alright, so we got our olive oil in. Garlic. I think I have here a half dozen cloves, about six, seven cloves. We're gonna throw that in here too. Uh, onions. I think I have three medium sized onions in here. Throw that in there. Of course, our kugutsas, so I'm gonna throw that in there too. And uh, these are the stems of the Swiss chard. And as I said earlier, they're gonna take a little longer to cook because the stems are thicker uh, compared to the leaves. The leaves only take, I don't know, less than 10 minutes to cook. These will take a little longer. We're gonna throw that in here too. And 
our tomatoes. Tomatoes, okay? Let's throw that in there too. All right. So we got olive oil, garlic, we got our uh, kogutsas in there, onions, Swiss chard stems, and um, our tomatoes. Salt and pepper to taste. And we're gonna get this cooking. Now this should take roughly 20 minutes to do, to finish. Once it starts going, about 20 minutes. And um, get some salt in here. Just salt and pepper to taste, whatever, whatever um, you prefer. And um, so yeah, about 20 minutes, uh, roughly medium heat. Just keep an eye on it. You want it just to simmer for 20 minutes, all right? So we're gonna get this thing going here. All right, and our last ingredients, we're gonna put our basil in there too. And this should all cook down and it'll, all the water from all the vegetables, it'll uh, create its own juice and cook down really nice. Uh, while it's cooking, just give it a, you know, some stirring and uh, get everything mixed up, that way it cooks real, down real nice. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to cook our pasta. Now, we don't use modern wheat anymore. We use the ancient wheat, which is called einkorn. Um, this is a wheat they used to eat during biblical times. The Egyptians ate this. Um, this is the natural, real wheat, okay? Uh, all the wheat today is all hybridized. I'm going to put a link right up here to a video I did that explains why there's so much problems today with irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, uh, gluten intolerance, uh, all of the diseases uh, is caused because the, the hybridized wheat that they're growing today, it, it, the gluten is non-digestible, okay? And it's tearing up your guts. Uh, stay away from that stuff. Again, uh, I'm gonna put a link up here to the video I did. And this here is by jovialfoods.com. I have no connection with them, but that's where we get our einkorn wheat. Um, we buy the wheat berries, we grind our own flour, um, and it's the best thing for you. And you'll never have problems with gluten intolerance and all that stuff. I have a good friend of mine, I told him it's going to get you, it's just a matter of time. And unfortunately, uh, it was about a month or so ago, he found out he was gluten intolerant and he had to switch over. So, einkorn wheat. All right, guys, so the pasta we're gonna break apart in like about thirds. Yeah, that'll work. This is cooking down really nice. Just gonna mix it up real good. And you can see down at the bottom how much water the vegetables are released, have released already, uh, especially the tomatoes. Uh, this will all cook down into a nice stew and uh, all the flavors will get all mixed up and nice. It'll come out real good. Yeah, this is looking good. All right, so what we're gonna do now, let's see, let's see how these uh, kogutsas look. Mm, it's still not done. That one's a little done. We're going to be adding our uh, Swiss chard now, the leaves, into it. Now this looks like a lot, 
I mean, we're making enough meals, probably two meals, or enough for, to eat twice uh, for, that'd be six people. This will all cook down two to nothing. Yeah, as far as quantities, I mean, you do what you feel is right for you. I mean, we're, we're trying to make a large quantity here so we can have a few meals out of this. Um, but you put whatever quantities you want. But as long as you use these ingredients in a decent amount of each, it'll work. Looking good. Pasta's looking good. Almost there, al dente. Now that is done. All your kugutsas are nice and soft. All the stems for the Swiss chard are nice and soft and everything's cooked nice. All right guys, I got my bowl of pasta here and we're just gonna scoop some of this up. And just pour it right on top. Now, you know what? We need to get some juice. Lots of juice here. Perfect. That looks good. All right, guys, now for the test. Mmm. Perfect. Now, again, you can salt and pepper to taste. Add more olive oil. Olive oil is good for you. Don't be afraid of olive oil. It's very good. They've been using it for thousands and thousands of years. It's very good for you. Get my kogutsa here. Mmm. All right, guys, I am gonna finish my dinner here. <laughs> and again, if you don't have kugutsa squash, just use your summer squash, these are good too. Um, very simple dish, just add the ingredients, doesn't matter, just get them close to what I did. And um, as far as ratio, uh, there's nothing set in stone here. Just put your Swiss chard in, your tomatoes, you know, your, your uh, onions and your garlic and all that stuff, and uh, your squash, of course. And uh, just let it cook down, lots of olive oil, and, um, and, it'll be, and it'll taste fantastic. All right, guys, so uh, thank you for watching. Buon appetito, e ci vediamo nel prossimo video.